Hey everybody, this is Mike Young with the digitalnomad.net and I am back here again with Don from Intuitive and also we are, we are here with Tony from EV Fix Me in Southern California. So welcome guys. Hey, thanks Mike. Thank and if you guys don't know Tony, we uh, we I had my car to shop before he has an like um, an independent electric vehicle repair shop that does a lot of work on Tesla. So we wanted to talk about some work that we think Tesla has actually been doing with a TSB, a technical service bulletin that addresses the front end vibration issues on Model S that has all wheel drive, which is all the new ones, and Model X, which has always had all wheel drive on the front end. Apparently they've redesigned some parts. So Tony, what do you know about this new TSB here in May of 2021? Yeah, so I took the new TSB and it looks like uh, there's not a whole lot of change, but they are actually acknowledging the issue now, which is going to be really nice because owners that are under warranty now can just simply go in with a uh, shutter issue. And uh, once Tesla sees that they have a shutter issue, they can go ahead and get their axles replaced. Now, the thing that is kind of interesting is uh, most of the components look the same. It looks like they did change the part number of one axle. So we're trying to find out a little bit more about that. I may end up just ordering one of those myself to put in my X and to you know, see the difference. Um, my car has been fully uh, uh, upgraded with arms and lowered. So, you know, I'm fully ready for it. Um, I just haven't done the axles yet because I've kind of been waiting to see if, you know, we can find any additional solutions before I go ahead and replace uh, the axles so that they're better protected. Yeah. So you want to know if this is an actual fix to the vibration that develops in the axle CV joints, right? Correct. Okay, because there's been, there was another TSB that was let out in I think early summer 2019 and that was supposed to fix the problem too, right? Correct, but that service boats can, I believe, focus more on the Ravens. Um, they had the solution, which was actually the change of how the clevis pin uh, or the clevis mount, um, where how that was connected to them shifting the position a little bit. But they didn't really do that for the older X. Or actually, you know, I may have to flip that around. But it was only only for one of the generations of the cars, but not for. Yeah, I think he did. I think it was flipped around because it was already on the Ravens, right? At that point, they had revised it. And maybe, how about this one? Do you think that because S and X are being uh, refreshed, that these parts that are new with the CSB are the new parts that are going to be on the new S's and X's that are going to be delivered soon? That could be. So Tesla often, you know, will use the same parts to be backwards compatible. So uh, they could have simply just changed it to be updated for the new one. Okay. And then Don, we've talked with you before about how this is part of an overall issue with not only this, but rear tire wear and this, the parts that you sell at Intuitive, they help with this issue as well. Cause you can lower your, some of your parts allow, allow you to lower the car. Like Tony had mentioned, he's done with his car, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, we're, we're selling the same kit Tony has on his car, which basically lowers the car a little bit to allow the, um, the half shafts to be more at a straight at a straighter angle than they are now. So that relieves some of the uh, binding and, and uh, tension that can build up, which is wearing those out. And one of the things that's interesting, you guys were talking about the clevis mount. Uh, from, from what I can see, the purpose of the uh, clevis mount refinement was to simply absorb the vibration that was coming from the axles, mm -hmm. not to uh, alleviate the, the this, this root of the problem to, to begin with. Um, right. Yep. So, yeah, I, I mean, I was I was hoping to see Tesla come out with, you know, a, a completely revised half shaft. But so far, it appears that the right the right half shaft is the exact same as the one that they've been using. And uh, the left one is kind of unknown at this point. But I think if they were to have done any sort of substantial revisions with the half shafts, they wouldn't have done it just to one side. Right. Mm -hmm. I, mean, okay. well, I mean, we'll see what happens. But I, it seems a little, I, I don't, yeah, I don't I agree. have hopes at this point. <laughs> yeah, we're not sure. I, I, I would agree with that. And Tony, you can't see, but I got a diagram behind me where you can see just a general setup for folks that aren't completely familiar with how this front drive system works on any front drive car. Cause you have to steer those tires. You have to steer, you know, left and right. So you've got these, these uh, half shafts, which are CV joints. And then you can see there's a red, there's red uh, straight lines are the axles. 
And then where my head is, is where the electric motor would be on a Tesla. And then you've got two joints you can see them that are, that are covered in blue in between that red axle. And they have to pivot and joint and uh, go up and down and have to turn with the wheels. And that's the problem, right? Is that there's so much of an angle in there, so many changes. And it's actually out of specification, probably from, from the, the way that the axle or CV joint manufacturers have designed these parts. So that what happens is, I know you told us before, Don, you get some kind of pitting in there, right? And some kind of imperfections, and then it causes a vibration and it never gets better. It just keeps getting worse. Yeah, that's right. I, basically, where those, the, they're like ball bearings on the inside and they go back and forth along the race. And when it's under a lot of torque, that ball is pushing against the race and it will, if the torque is enough, it will cause what's called internal spalling. And it basically just wears out the surface and creates a, a little speed bump. So now that ball is rolling over back and forth over this speed bump every time the, the axle spins around and that's, that's creating this vibration. Yeah. So, so, so to the actual solution, like you talked about earlier is to develop some CV joints that can handle this constant all the time, high rates of torque and steer the wheels and absorb bumps yeah. all at the same time. Right. And it, it's not an easy task because there's basically no room in there to work with. So yeah. you have to create a new half shaft that will fit, you know, within the constraints of the current measurements of everything. Either that or you have to redo a bunch of parts, um, you know, to try to get a bigger half shaft in there that can, that can handle more torque. But. Yep. So, so you know, that, and I think we all know, all three of us, that that is the solution. Whether or not Tesla has actually developed that solution with this TSB is still unknown, right? Yeah, and I, I, like I said, I, I kind of doubt it because why would they only do it to the left side and not the right side? Why is the left side, um, am I getting that right? I think it's right. Left side is the new one. Yeah, the right side is the old, uh, the original. Because yep. the left original. side, the driver's side, when you say left, you're talking about driver's side, is it correct? Uh, that's in the, the United second. States, yeah. Yeah, so that has, the, yeah, that has the, uh, the clevis mount on it. That's the side that seems to be worse, I think, overall, on the, is on the driver's side, U.S., yeah. Right, right, right. So anyway, that's, I guess that's it. it. So it remains to be seen. And I guess when we know more, we'll hopefully do an update video describing this. And hopefully at some point in the near future, have an actual permanent solution for this driveline issue other than lowering the car. Like you said, Don, you, you sell parts, which are great. You can lower the car down. Like Tony said, he's lowered his. It just means that you can't use the full range of suspension if you have air suspension or you're all constantly lower to the ground if you don't have air suspension on some of the older S models. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's it for now, I suppose. Yeah. And so T Tony, if you're there, I'm not sure if you're still there, but thank you so much for being with us. And we hope to talk to you again in the near future. Thanks, Tony. He's, he's Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he may have had to split out there. All right, thanks, Tom. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>